I have been getting a lot of requests to do a studio tour. I try and give you guys one of those every year. Um, but specifically, some of you have been messaging me and asking if I would go through and show you my workspace and how I set up everything. Um, the spray bench, the paints. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of a reboot. Um, just specific places like here. Um, I have been bored to tears with the way my desk has been set up. Not just, I mean, you look at, you come into work, it's just like anybody that goes to work anywhere, whether you drive a truck for a living or you're in an office cubicle. After a while, it just gets so boring. And I was really bored. So I'm in the process of trying to do little things. Right now, I've got my studio mic that I use for just the, the video updates and the, the spray sessions and stuff like that sitting on this desk and it's just a, it just takes up space um so i need to figure out a way to either put it on a boom or i just i'm ready to do something different um i took all of this apart i clean it every once in a while because dust and stuff builds up i'm a pet owner um, more like a small zoo owner so i've got three dogs and two cats so this room has to be as sterile as possible when I work and that's probably the hardest thing because like many of you out there um, we're not working out of a million dollar office uh, somewhere in a beautiful city with you know millions and millions of subscribers not yet um, but to be able to get to that point we have to work in an environment that suits our needs so I have converted my garage and I'm going to get into that um, it, it functions really well for what I need it to do but I've looked, and you guys have looked at the same board. I mean, it's like a snooze fest, you guys. I just, ugh. I needed, I needed to switch some stuff around. So I'm going to talk about the pieces real quick that I've got going out today. And then we're going to get into what's been going on in the other part of the room because there's quite a bit. And I'm really excited about that. And I want to show you everything that I've redone. That's now just, I've, Oh my God, there were hundreds of boxes and I don't know why I hoard them. I hoard them. It's like, I'm going to need them, so I better hang on to them. And that's just ludicrous. So I cleaned it. I'm cleaning up as we go. Um, really excited with the way things are transforming, but let's show you the pieces. And we're going to start with this desk. So I needed to reboot and I wanted to get more of me. Um, I've got a couple of little teeny tiny sponsors and there's a lot of people that I like to, a lot of small businesses that I really like to promote because I believe in small businesses. So, you know, like Pete with Reckless, Dinger, I love Brian over at, at, uh, at Dinger because he does a lot. He goes kind of like the extra step with, with checking his baits out and stuff. And he's got some, some stuff that nobody else has. But I didn't have a whole lot of me in here, so I've put a bunch of my artwork down. I got up the really chatty old piece of fabric that was down here, and I'm just, I'm in the process of really redoing some stuff. Um, I, I was sick and tired of the way I showcased baits. Um, yeah, so we're working on it. We're working on it, you guys, so bear with me. Um, and, and I know you guys had to have been bored to tears watching the same desk all the time. And you're still going to see the desk because I still want to showcase the pieces and give you tips and tricks and all that good stuff. But we're, I just needed to change the scenery. So let me know what you think. Do you like the artwork on there? Um, all of this stuff is my artwork on this side now, which I'm really stoked about. So, um... And yeah, I, I do sell my artwork. If you guys are interested in any of that stuff, there is a section of art on the website at JekyllBaits.com. I also have an Etsy. I'll link both of those below. The Etsy stuff is more everyday landscape and just a bunch of different... I've got photographs because I also am um, really heavy into landscape and, and nature photography and all that stuff as well. Um, I, I like to stay busy because art is my only means of making a living. So that's what I do. And sometimes it's a struggle, sometimes it's not. But every day I'm thankful to be doing something that I'm in charge of, that I don't have to sell my soul to promote somebody else's dreams. And that's really, that's the goal. So 
I'm just blessed that I get a chance to be able to, and I love to share that with you guys, so that's why I do what I do here on the channel. So that's, um, yeah, five minutes and 44 seconds of why I am who I am, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's talk about this Norman Fat Boy. I love these little guys, and they've been around a really long time, and I don't know if Mega Bass got their lip off of that, but it sure is similar. Uh, but these are these are cool. I redid this one as a sun. I've been in, been into sunfish lately, so that's uh, it's got some glitter on it. And these I don't have the wires off of these. I just pulled them because I'm getting ready to dunk them the second time. Um, so these that you're seeing this morning, these Spro Fat Johns, these are all getting dunked a second time, and I do that for on request for tournament anglers. This is going out to a tournament angler. And when you look at it close up, it's got some cool greens and blues. It's got that textured look to it, and that's just the mesh. And there are several of them. You guys were having fun with these on Facebook. I did, I did release it. I'm looking for the sweet spot with lighting because I'm kind of moving lighting around. So we'll get this over here. And this is that this is that new formula KBS. So far, it's holding up really, really well. I like it a lot. This is on that Dinger three-inch um, pre-foiled popper. It's got some really cool reflective properties. One of my favorite phrases. I don't know why, but I like it. Dark. It's got that red on the face. A little bit of purple underneath. This one's dressed and ready to go. It's going out this morning. I, I did an auction on it yesterday. Yesterday was Sunday. Again, in a sunfish mood. And then we've got some Imperial Popper Frogs. Same type of deal. Just layer upon layer upon layer. And it builds up that really cool textured look. I do have a video on this. It's pretty old, but the lighting was really good. And it was done on... A Dinger 120 SP. And then I think right after that, there's a little review that I did comparing the Dinger version of the bait with the Scheltz version of that same blank um, and how they measured up to one another as far as weight, as far as distribution when they were swimming. So uh, that's I'll have to dig those out. But the texturing has already been done. I have shown that. But like I said uh, on the last update, if you guys want to see something again, by all means, I'll be happy to do that. And there are seven of these that are going out this morning. So I need to get on the ball with that. I've got a Mr. Yuck Green Sewer Rat. And I always tell my customers, when you get the bait that I box up for you guys, please, please, please do not try and text pose that hook. Leave it exactly like this. That's how it'll swim. It swims real well like that. And then we've got, uh, these are the Jetson eyes on this one. Kind of got a little bit different of a color scheme. It's that red to red violet to blue. And this has got that chemical green fluorescent tail. So these are just a lot of fun. And this is just a little blank from Scheltz. I think everybody had, and their brother has these circuit board lips for those wakes and they swim real well um, spro features them on theirs too on those guys and then i've got a coffin bill that's the last one i'm going to show you this morning i love this thing i love the orange going back into a reddish orange and that olive in the middle that is your typical ozark craw came out real nice and there's that Beautiful, beautiful KBS. I have not had problem one. And you know what? Real quick, I know we're at 10 minutes and 58 seconds, and this is probably going to be like a 15 or 16 minute video. I think maybe a little bit longer because I want to show you through uh, a little bit of the shop and the remod. But just touching real quick. So there's two ways that a clear coat like KBS can dry top down or bottom up. And that means that the air is the triggering factor on the top down okay so that means that the top of the coat hit gets hit by the air and that hardens it and that's the way the old stuff used to work um they had more of those chemical curing agents than they did the other one and from the bottom up 
means that whatever the surface that adheres to this bait is, for example, on this um, blunt force trauma, the paint and the, the surface is actually part of the activating triggering for curing that. So that means that the components actually dry from the inside up instead of from the air that touches it going down. So that's why your curing time's a little bit faster on this new stuff. Let's get into some shop talk. So just like many of you, I work out of my house. Usually there's a surfing show on. I'm in uh, landlocked Arkansas now, but I'm from the East Coast. So you guys have probably already seen this before. But this is the house portion. I normally don't film when I'm washing, but it's been raining and nasty lately, so I figured I would. We're gonna start over in the corner. That's just a regular antenna, it's not hooked up to, this is just hooked up to a regular antenna. Um, it's not hooked up to a satellite or direct or anything. It had been in the past, but I decided that um, it's just way too much money to pay. Uh, we get free TV, I get YouTube TV, I have an Amazon Prime membership. There's just so much streaming now where you can get regular channels and stuff. Why well, pay like a hundred and I don't even know how much money I was paying a month for Game of Thrones, basically, for, <laughs> for HBO. Um, so yeah, over here, um, this is just all fishing stuff so and envelopes this is where I keep my envelopes for mailing stuff out tapes packing tape then we get into some of the supplies and equipment um, mesh more mesh and wired mesh <laughs> couple of frogs stencils pretty much are here here Got more gloves. I'm in the midst of working this morning, so I figured I would just show you around a little bit. I hear a lot of people say that the, the messiness with dripping is what dissuades them from doing it. But if you just add a little bit of a, like this is, I'm about ready to change it, but I have a little area set up. Well, actually, I've got two areas under here which is overflow from here can usually run about 40 baits between these three per day if I have to um, and then it all drips down to this so we're good to go a lot of people ask me where I get these I just do what I do and just start researching go online to the companies and then look at their online catalogs and I've just printed pages off for what their color specs are that's all I did you guys can do that too all right, I keep website orders up here. These are current open orders. Extra fishing stuff up there. These are the lights. I've got a lot of studio lights, but sometimes it feels like it's still not enough. Uh, that's where you guys can help because I do have a Patreon account attached to this YouTube channel. So if you really want to help me get brighter um, in 2020, by all means, I could certainly use the help because like I always say, this is the only way I make a living is teaching you guys and making lures for the fishing industry and art. Um, I've got some new stuff for you guys to take a gaze at while we're over here spraying for the spray sessions and it continually changes but I'm just I'm starting to filter in a little bit more of my artwork and stuff that I enjoy looking at I love looking at the water and I work on stenciling a little bit so um, this is an art tool and art tools by the way are USA made I think it's pretty sure it's West Coast stuff um, but yeah, that's just working with bubbles and stenciling and multicolors and that's just lay layering, good layering. So that's it. Um, I keep one airbrush active at all times. I have a backup airbrush. I don't use, I don't run two and three guns at one time. 
and I always have a 0.35 needle. Keep extra needles back here. This one is a 0.5, this one's a 0.35. It's just for backup, and I don't switch my needles out. A lot of you guys ask, are you switching your needles out to do... No, I don't. i uh, just increase the pressure. I have a second pressure gauge that I can maneuver and change right from here. Um, and the paints I use vary from Createx to the entire Wicked line. Um, some Spectratex, although I find that it's a little bit runny and the metallic stuff is real, real thick with the glitter. I keep extra glitters, although I only use it at customer requests. I rarely do stuff with glitter. Tools that I need every day. I've got mesh that I use. I've got tons of alligator clips, hard stencils from Lure Color Studios, extra stuff, uh, specifically this, and there's a purple somewhere under here. I use for the winter green sun. It's just my own mix of colors with some, um, some pearlized paint in there. Uh, detailing brushes, more hard stencils from um, from Jonas, Q-tips, just cause. I mean, I know a lot of people say that Q-tips can be dangerous, but it's not that bad. <laughs> These I've got. Uh, I break the the KBS down the quartz into two. So these are reg the current formula, and then this is the formula that they just gave me to test. So larger brushes for actual canvas painting, which I do quite a bit of when I get the chance. I've got the Bloodline, not all the colors, but a lot of the colors. I do use Comart colors. I'm using more and more of the FW inks and um, PH Martins. Some more overflow paints. These are oil paints. Those are extra stuff for just canvas and sketching. I do a whole lot of different. I love doing street art. Love Mon Montana cans. Those are in a completely separate back there. That's um, another storage area. So pr pretty much I've made this place work for me. And you guys, this is uh, these are the open orders for larger like swim baits. And how do I keep all that stuff organized? Well, if you guys are doing anything other than auctions, auctions are the stuff that goes out quick. I can do that because I have them on hand or they're extras from orders. Everything else, I keep open orders here and I update it weekly. Everything is sprayed in the order it was received and paid for. Um, I keep overflow under here. These are blanks. And then boxes for reels that I keep. A lot of you guys ask what compressor I use. And I'm just kind of going through this as I think of the questions that you guys are asking me this morning. Um, this is a California Air Tools 8010. It's an 8-gallon tanked compressor. It's fairly quiet. You guys hear it on the videos. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. It requires very little maintenance. It needs to be bled uh, every couple of days. A little bit less in the winter time. The, the most difficulties that I have is this roll-up door and keeping it warm enough in here. So I have a heater here which is fairly high output. It's directly into the wall. I've got a plug over here that I use. I think this is like 1500 watts and it'll do a room about three quarters of the size so if I had a little bit smaller of a space that I worked in it would be ideal but because I have a fairly large space to work in because I'm crazy like that I use the second one which is less wattage I think that's a thousand max watts and it's a little bit more uh, energy efficient but I run that on a heavy duty um, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Heavy duty line to another. I don't, basically I don't have both heating units and the compressor running and the lights running on the same circuit. My circuit board to the whole house is out here. And then this is the big part. This is the part that I'm really happy with. It's coming along. Um, the walls were the same color as this side. 
and these two storage units which basically had bicycle stuff and camping stuff and some overflow um, I had I just, it was hodgepodge and it was a disaster and it was flat against these walls so there was like no other space that I could work in so I just kind of pulled them out put them together this is covered but it's easily accessible that's just not attached to anything comes right off uh, it's more for aesthetics for me and if I have clients um, picking up stuff and then schedule and that's pretty much it but this is this is I'm super happy with how that came out um, this is a whole nother conversation it's a lot of finessey stuff most of my bait casters are out in my Jeep and then at any given time if I need to blow off some steam that's how I do it um, that's a monitor to the desktop it's a laser printer what else um, a couple of studio mics which I'm just getting into um, I want to do a boom mic on the um, on the finishing desk I'm trying to think of what else I need to show you guys I'm trying not to whip the GoPro around too quick camera gear it's extra just it's not video well yeah I guess the the Nikon's in there extra lenses this is kind of cool because this is where I was doing I just kind of had this shoved out in the middle of the room it's where I do uh, acrylic pouring and and canvas work uh, along with this area here so this is don't be fooled this apple barrel I absolutely do not use that for airbrushing a lot of folks do a lot of folks do okay with it the biggest problem uh, as far as you get chunks in there so that's a problem because it'll clog your airbrush up but the other problem is this paint does not hold its color it's not meant nor designed to take a lot of repeated use like you get in fishing lures so I really would not recommend Apple Barrel or Folk Art or any of that stuff although some people use it very effectively I'm sure I'll get a slew of comments about whether you do or you don't or you love it or you hate it that's fine uh, just personal preference I do not use this stuff for airbrushing I just use it for canvas and regular painting so this is all of that stuff down here this is just um, stuff that I was goofing around with I don't know if you, you may have or may not have seen that stuff and then at the finishing desk and yes I know that's a pain in the butt I'm sorry you're hearing the noise of the washer but it had to be done so my backyard is a, a mud well it's sort of like a rugby match that happens continually every day except with three dogs instead of a team of ruggers so it stays pretty muddy and because I live in the Mississippi Delta it's gonna rain until May pretty much it's cold rain now but this is the finishing desk and I'm starting to transform that too I was so so tired and I know I told you in the the first part of the video so this is where we'll finish up I was really tired of looking at it every day and I'm sure you guys were getting over it too so in the process of transforming this just change the setup from time to time on how I display baits eyes my eyes are kept here and in here my super glue this just this needs to change out too but it's just extra if if one of my customers needs an order of 1.5s or something that's brand name that's not over buried under all those invoices um, then that's what I do these are headed to Kevin Wilson these are headed to another tournament angler I'm real excited about how these came out as well these are those Spro Fat John 60s again I'm probably being redundant and repeating myself at this point in the game um, oh and these um, yeah um, these you haven't seen yet this is tilapia and I'm pretty stoked about how this came out get it out of that bright searing LED light I'm not trying to burn your retinas out this morning tilapia couple little swim baits that's what I've got for you guys this morning thanks for watching I know we went over but you guys have been asking and asking and asking for an update on the studio and how I kind of organize my stuff um, everything prints from the laptop over to that that's how I print out invoices 
And we'll see you on the next spray session. I'm trying to figure out which one I'm going to do. I've gotten a lot of good comments and a lot of ideas and suggestions from you guys, um, along with the stuff that I already have scheduled in my head to do. So we should have one today. Is What is today? Tuesday. I started this video on Monday. So we should see... I'm going to say by Thursday you guys should see a spray session. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you guys have a fabulous day, evening, morning, whenever you guys happen to watch this video. And I'll see you on the next one.